Howdy folks, I'm Jerry Isdale and uh, pleasure to see you all here. Uh, I am the uh, program manager for Space Gambit, which is an open source uh, space program. We're working to make with the maker community to build humanity into a space-faring civilization. Space Gambit is a two-year program uh, promoting humanity's long-term survival and expansion into space. We are funded uh, by a $500,000, half a million dollars, two million uh, from DARPA. Uh, back in September of 2014, we started, and we have until September of this year to finish spending all that money. With your help, please. We are managed by my own makerspace in Maui, uh, Hawaii. So yes, I run an international space program from a farm in Maui. And last year, we funded 10 programs with a total of about $140,000, $150,000. Uh, we did a whole lot of travel and outreach to different programs, to different people, to maker fairs, to visiting maker spaces, getting people involved. Uh, we Last this spring, in February, we signed a uh, Space Act agreement with NASA to work with them on the international, uh, their Asteroid Grand Challenge. The Asteroid Grand Challenge, if you haven't seen it yet, walk over to the NASA booth and talk to them about it. Asteroid Grand Challenge is to find all the asteroids which threaten humanity and figure out what to do with them, or know what to do with them. Uh, just this spring, we funded a contest with Instructables uh, to create portable workstations. And uh, we have our 2014 call for projects where we have another $130,000 to give out. Uh, we're accepting uh, proposals now. The end of the call for proposals ends on Tuesday, so right after I finish talking, run home, find a, in the link, and download and write up your proposal for me. There's a list of uh, the 10 projects, nine projects that we funded last year. Uh, BioMonster is an automated bioreactor. You can find them right behind the NASA booth over there. They're actually dis displaying here. Uh, the Hackerspace Earthship is a closed cycle human habitat, a, basically a biosphere, which uh, we built in on the island of Maui. Uh, and it worked pretty, pretty well until it flooded. Um, the, uh, the Hacker Scouts Space Badge, Hacker Scouts, now known as Curiosity Hacked. Uh, we funded them to create a series of badges for uh, space programs. They have an astronomy badge. Uh, they're working on a, uh, a migration into space badge with terrariums and all these other different things that they're working with the kids on. If you haven't seen Curiosity Hacked, they're down the far end of the, uh, the field down there with the kid activities across from the, uh, uh, the, the, the ag buildings down there. Uh, they're working with the kids on it, and you can talk to them about the programs they're doing. Uh, open bio, uh, Make a Space was a uh, project with the School Factory, which is a playbook on how to create a maker space. And uh, School Factory is a fiscal sponsor for maker spaces. They will walk you through the efforts, the issues of creating your own maker space, uh, what it takes to build one up, and this playbook uh, walks you through a lot of that. Uh, open Bioreactor is another open bioreactor. This one was uh, uh, created by a group in, in France, in Paris, France. They were our international component last year. Uh, and their, uh, their system is out there on the web. You can look, download the plans and all for that. Peace Swarm is a project to create uh, robots that you could 3D print that will actually move. They're still in production and working on it. Uh, they have some really interesting projects. That one actually happens to be done with some other uh, a, a makerspace working with some NASA people on, on some work. So some very interesting work there. Sat Sat Stim was created by the some couple of folks out of uh, Crash Space, the uh, hackerspace in Los Angeles. Uh, it's a satellite simulation program. They've got a beta up. Uh, they haven't gone live with anything yet, but they've got the beta up, and then they got distracted by more money somewhere else. Uh, it's actually their educational simulator for the satellites and, and uh, small space stations. It's a real, honest-to-God engineering simulator, so they spent a lot of time on the engineering of it, which is really pretty, pretty impressive. SILSTUDENT was created by the folks at the uh, Mojave Makerspace, and it's a partial spacesuit. They made a forearm 
uh, vacuum capable uh, spacesuit uh, partial part. The Space Hacker Workshop uh, was with Ed Wright doing a uh, satellite CubeSat workshop. We conducted one of them in Dallas last summer, uh, and a lot of the materials for that are now online. SpeedCap is a, pro a website out there, DIY Space, which is, DIY Space Explorations is a open source is a open source site that has a lot of interviews and really good information about space. The portable workstation contest we funded with our friends over at Instructables was to design and document a workstation that you could pack everything up, store it away, pull it out, transport it somewhere. The logic of that being that if you're on a space station or a habitat somewhere, you've got a, a limited amount of space availability. You need to be able to put your stuff away and pull it out. Also, maker spaces for the near term also need a similar type of system. We need to put our stuff away, stash it away, pull it out, set it up for the afternoon or the evening, or maybe take it to a school or a community center and do demonstrations and workshops there. We wound up with 167 entries. Uh, we funded about $5,000 in prizes. There were 15 winners with a judge's prize, a grand prize, three first prizes, and ten second prizes. Uh, here on the picture here, you can see the judge's prize, which is a really nice wooden electronics workbench that all folds up into a nice carryable box, unfolds into uh, a flat table you can work on with the, uh, the tools up behind it. The grand prize winner uh, it was the one on the far end that um, it folds out into a working table with an LED lights and so forth. And the, uh, we asked, the Instructables asked if anybody who received their winnings would send me pictures. I got one guy who sent me his pictures, a nice kid from India, uh, Harash, Harsha, Harsha, who's the second prize winner. He was ecstatic to, uh, to get the prize and that we selected. I really liked his, uh, his model, too. It was really cool. And uh, he won the, uh, the toolkit and a lily pad. Uh, quite happy to have it. Our, natural, uh, our NASA Space Act agreement in January with NASA Ames, we signed this agreement. It's a wonderful little thing that lets us collaborate with NASA on the Asteroid Grand Challenge. It gives us absolutely no more money. Uh, we get a little bit of publicity for it. We can't use their meatball logo, but we can talk about NASA, and we love having them on board with things. Uh, we help them do some topic planning for the... Uh, Space Apps Challenge, which happened back in April. They have a, a whole series of challenges that NASA puts out, and there's a hackathon weekend, and they have a whole bunch of people work on it. A lot of people, uh, we cooperated with NASA on setting up what those challenges would be for the asteroid grand challenge, for the asteroids. Um, and we've had a number of the people who worked on it that weekend are now submitting to us for our 2014 projects. This is the main theme behind our 2014 call, but it is not exclusive. We're allowing a lot of other topics uh, as well as that. Uh, the 2014 call for projects, um, the main themes are that it's a fun, uh, we're looking for educational materials, uh, training materials on the Asteroid Grand Challenge, projects about making telescopes, making automated uh, autonomous remote operated telescopes, uh, or just about any other space-related ones. That's uh, at spacecampa.org, 2014 call for projects. The limits on that is the call ends on Tuesday, the 20th, so you got to go home and write stuff up real quick. You can go to that project page. There's a link to our Google Docs, which has a sample proposal uh, format and a sample contract. Uh, also on our website, you can look down, you can see some of the previous projects and what they submitted. Um, some of the project requirements there, whatever you do for us is going to be documented as open technology. Everything we do in our, our projects is licensed, Creative Commons. We don't want to, you're not creating IP that we have to transfer to anybody else. The government has no specific rights to the, the software or hardware or designs that you have. It's out there. Everybody is on an equal playing field. 
I don't want to see any uh, ITAR restricted materials this year. Some people last year that spacesuit one kind of uh, toad was a little close on the edge of things. Um, ITAR, if you're not familiar with it, that's the International Trade and Arms Respe Regulations. It means you can't make bombs or rocket guidance systems and so forth. We want to see community workspace involvement, something along the lines of a hackerspace, a, work, uh, a makerspace, a tech shop. Uh, some of your members uh, of your team are working at one of those spaces or members of one of those teams uh, at any sort of a community workspace. That's great. Last year we had BioCurious, we had CrashSpace, we had Maui Makers, we had uh, the Mojave Makers. It was a really cool bunch of people involved. Uh, there are some government accounting rules that will apply that are applying, so you really do have to hire a bookkeeper. That was one of the biggest failures last year is people didn't know how to file a uh, time timesheets or even just a simple accounting of where the money went. Um, the budget is going to be between five thousand and twenty thousand dollars. That's about the same amount we had last year. Last year actually it was about eight to twenty thousand dollars is what we wound up funding. 20,000 is our cap so we can get as many people funded as possible. The uh, time frame is by September 10th you need to get me back the, the documentation on it. That's not a lot of time to a lot of development. It's not a lot of budget to a lot of uh, development. But between the two, that's enough to live on for a few months and get some interesting stuff done. Your project should be innovative and it should be uh, a little bit ev uh, evolutionary. It can be educational, which can combine, bring out what you can find. There's a group in Hawaii that I'm funding to do a little bit of a, uh, they're a, a middle school. They're interviewing some of the astronomers that we have working at the Haleakala Observatory and the Institute for Astronomy there. And they're going to be putting together a educational video about the Asteroid Grand Challenge. Uh, we don't want to see perpetual motion machines faster than light engine designs and all that. We don't have money to fund uh, to spend for that right now. Um, there needs to be an educational component because a large part of what we do is we want to educate the public about what's going on. Having uh, some interactive games or interactive multimedia systems that we could get around to uh, a lot of people out there, get it out to traveling exhibits, get it out at maker fairs. Those would be wonderful things to have to augment what NASA is doing here. And if you want more air information, spacecampit.org is the website. Uh, that's a, you can submit a mess email to projects at spacecampit.org. Uh, myself, Isdale at spacecampit.org. Alex CG is my uh, cohort in the UK. Um, and this is, exam this is the header of our, uh, our website there. Uh, you can see that it goes across in the menu projects and the call for projects. Apply now. Don't bother with the apply now. Go to that first one that says call for projects. There's the steps on that. Below that is where you can get to the projects uh, form, the, the Google Doc. Um, and if you want to see what we did, the reports from people who submitted last year, it's down there on the next one, the 2013 projects. How do I do on time? Twelve more? Wow, okay. <laughs> Are there any questions? Anybody have any questions? Anybody want to propose anything? Anybody want some money? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a fully space thing like the uh, the habitat we built. The uh, the Haish habitat was a about a 20-foot uh, diameter um, uh, storage tank that was converted into a man livable tank, we had recycled uh, water, it was growing material, we had algae purifying the air and so forth and it worked out pretty well. Uh, it was another uh, Arduino controlled system. So, any other questions? Hi. Can, uh, can you propose another project? Uh, yes, if you were on a, on a previous project and you won something, you got some money from me last time around, you want to uh, take it further on, propose again, see what we can come up with. We'll be very happy to uh, 
consider it. It will be within the other people that are are, are coming in. So uh, down here, she had a question. Thanks. Um, my name is Brooks Zern, and I'm a, a co-founder of Sunshine Labs, which is a uh, an incubator and hardware uh, accelerator in Orlando, Florida. And one of the yeah, thank you. Um, one of the things it, it kind of grew out of our hackerspace. And one of the things I've been finding is I have a lot. I have a number of people come in with uh, project ideas for things that they would like to turn into uh, turn into actually start making them. And uh, and they they show me their proposal. We we figure out what will be involved in getting it actually out and existing. And then they find out it's going to cost some time. They find out it's going to cost some money, and they're like, "eh." Um, so this this is intriguing to me because what I could do is if, if there's actually if there's money involved in this, I can try to redirect some of this talent into some of these projects because we have a we have a great resource of talent coming to us at this point that I would like to redirect towards things that will be productive for them as well as for you. So would I be able to find out about those kinds of projects on this website? You can. Okay. Yes. By the way, where is your Maker Story booth? The um, Maker Story? The Maker Story booth is over. You go down to the drone thing, you make a right, and it's the second booth in front of cool. the doors. Ian is a friend of mine. and uh, Dave, I, Dave, uh, Dave Casey? Yeah. I, yeah, Dave, Dave is a wonderful uh, wonderful person. He's done a great one, great deal for the Orlando Maker community. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you... This is a great way to get money to makers, and I encourage anyone from government who wants to give more money to makers, this sort of a way of... of Putting somebody in between the uh, uh, the makers and the government is also a good thing. There's a big impedance mismatch between uh, what the government requires and what they think, and the way makers work a lot of the time. So, so hardware, inc so incubators could actually provide a, be able to provide a link because they can kind of uh, interpret some of this government stuff and put it in a manner because they're used to interfacing with these people as individuals. Right, and, and hardware innovation labs or software innovation labs are a really good place for it. That yeah. way they can give them the business uh, help that they okay. need to have. Excellent. I'll uh, talk to you afterwards. Thank you. Anyone else? Other questions? Uh, no other questions? Thank you for your time this evening, this morning. Oh, wait, wait, a question down front. Oh, right. The uh, I want, just wonder, uh, reminding me that uh, today is the 10th anniversary of the first amateur rocket uh, uh, that went actually into space, 72 miles up. That was happened 10 years ago today? 10 years. Ten years ago today, uh, is this on? Okay. yeah, that was at Black Rock Desert, Nevada. I went to 72 miles up, and uh, you can uh, either look it up on. Uh, it, it was called the Civilian Space Exploration Team (CSXT), uh, and we found it 18 miles from the launch pad. Uh, it went 72 miles up, and all volunteer group. First time that was done that way. Makers can do this stuff. It's it's not that hard to get into space. Well, it can be a little bit difficult. There's been an amazing amount of stuff about space. Go on over to the NASA booth and get a chance. See the uh, uh, the CubeSats, the uh, the ChipSats that have been done there, uh, the other projects they've got going on. Talk to the NASA guys. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff. You may have heard Sam talk earlier uh, about what NASA's doing. It's really amazing. There's some guys up front from the Canadian uh, uh, Alberta uh, Space Society, Pisces. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on around there, and you can get involved. Reach out and find out. Thank you, guys. Ow. Getting out there. Of course, Facebook's annoying as hell today. I can't get up there to post anything. Yeah. The uh, I was at this MakerCon earlier this week, and the uh, guy from Google gave us a talk, and, and he's like, "Oh, everybody should be online, you know, online and use the cloud." And I said, "Well, that's kind of rude."